Hello people of YouTube, it is Sunday the 29th of March here, still in lockdown, um, I'm, I'm a little bit drunk, finished my last reading vlog so now I'm doing my hello for my next reading vlog, yep, see you tomorrow, oh and I'm reading uh, Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut, we'll probably finish it tonight unless I get too drunk to keep reading, which might happen, I don't know. Excuse me sir, what are you doing? Are you sitting on my book and trying to eat the tabs that I've put in to mark my pages again? Is that what you're doing? Oh, oh no! Ready, Biggie? Ready? Do you get it? Do you want to have another go? Ready? Ready? No, but what about next May? Possibly, Glenn said in a low voice. Kill it! Get it! Yes, quite possible. And what do you think would happen to... Alrighty, I'm watching Retza Pure. They, um basically comment over people doing Let's Play videos, so other people do, uh, sorry, just ticking something off my to-do list. Other people do, like, videos of them playing the games, and then these people kind of commentate over that and uh, take take the piss a little bit. Um, sorry, just bear with me here. Figuring out what I need to do, you see. So I need to film my Kurt Vonnegut. All right, yes, yeah, so it is Monday. I've been up all night, so I'm pretty tired. But I have been very productive. I'm hoping to do a little bit more filming now. Got most of my editing done as well. Uh, I went to the post office to sell my eBay stuff and the post office wasn't open. Uh, there is another one I can go to, but it's a mile in the other direction, so I'm going to try that tomorrow. But while I was out, I did at least go to Tesco and stocked up on supplies and stuff. Um, so that I don't really need to leave again for another couple of days, really. Well, I need to go tomorrow to post this stuff. I actually have more than I can take in a single trip. So I'm going to do a trip tomorrow and then another one towards the end of the week. Uh, in terms of books, I finished reading um, Cat's Cradle, which is very good. I gave it like a four point five out of five full review of that coming soon and now i'm currently reading the ard lamont mystery the real life story behind the creation of sherlock holmes by daniel smith and this basically inf investigates the people who sir arthur conan doyle knew who it said that he based holmes and watson on and there was also a real mystery this ard lamont mystery in 1893 young army officer cecil hambra was murdered unleashing one of the most gripping court cases victorian britain had ever known even more remarkably, the case brought together two pioneering forensic experts, two men upon whom Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes happened to be based. Their involvement in the Ardlemont mystery reveals how the world's most famous detective came to be. It's very good so far, very interesting, uh, especially to a Holmes fan. It's cool that it's got this Sherlock Holmes thing uh, influence that um, you would enjoy if you're a Holmes fan, but also it's just a pretty interesting true crime novel so far as well. So I'm just cracking on with this. And I've got about 21 hours of my audiobook of The Stand to go. I think that's your update. I don't think I've got anything else to let you know about. Yeah. It's how we like to sit and watch TV, isn't it, Biggie? What do you think of Daddy's new book, Biggie? Do you love it? Is it a good book? Is it your favourite book? Yeah? Is that how you read? Is that how you read, Biggie? Like that? You're very good at reading. I thought if she was asleep, I'd What are you leave. up to? But I wanted to make sure she wasn't wasn't dead or anything. She's so Why are you old. twitching? Nick's gaze never left Glenn's lips. Are you okay? She wasn't there at all. <laughs> and I found this on the table. study in demonology yeah so that you can make it hey now you really make it yeah so that you can make it now oh look at my face my name is might have been my name is never Today's ridiculousness has been that I've written a song. 
I've not even tried to play it before, so we'll see how this goes. Um, and yeah, it definitely doesn't have a name. Oh no, it does have a name. It's called Present Past Imperfect. she is too the i don't know i don't know nothing soon all right i'm down to about ten and a half hours left on this audio book i think now i may finish it today i don't know i might not as well i'm to be honest i'm looking forward to watching some youtube so you know but we'll see been cracking on with that yesterday i went to the post office and bought some more supplies while i was out so that's good don't have to leave again now for a little while Although I do still have a bag full of books to go to the post office that I still need to take. Everything's freaking crazy at the moment as well. Um, my sleeping pattern's screwed. I went to bed at about 4pm yesterday and woke up at like 4am today. Um, my radio show, first episode of that aired. So uh, that's very exciting. And so today I'm going to be starting to record episode 2. Um, I also, oh god, I have to get up to do this. I also got in the post this very exciting thing. In fact, you've already seen a clip of it because you've already seen Biggie playing with it. But it is The Tower Hill Terror by Dane Cobain. So this is the second book in the Lightfold series. And um, yeah, this is, these are finally, I wanted to show you like the physical version. They'll be out on April 10th. If you want to buy a copy, you can drop me a message as well. I do uh, signed copies that come with a free pen and bookmark for £7 plus postage. Um, obviously, international postage is a bit more, but yeah. Um, so there's that. In terms of the books I've been reading, I don't know what I was reading last time I updated you, but I finished Cat's Cradle. And then I moved on to this bad boy, The Ard Lamont Mystery, the real-life story behind the creation of Sherlock Holmes. This is basically both... Uh, well, it's non-fiction, and it's basically both a true crime investigation, and like, it ties it back in because some of the people who were involved with the case are the people who are said to have inspired Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. So yeah, if you like true crime or Sherlock Holmes, you're going to enjoy this. I gave it like a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5, I was quite happy with it, and um, yeah, it was cool. I got sent this ages ago and only just got round to it. And so now... I'm reading A Wild Sheep Chase by Haruki Murakami. I'm on page 34 of about 300 or so, so I'll be here for a little while. And I think this book was given to me by my friend Neil. I'm not sure. I think he gave it to me ages ago. Uh, I'm down to 53 books on my currently reading TBR, and that includes six that I've ordered that haven't arrived in the post yet, so I'm quite excited to get to some of those. Um, we will see. We'll see if any arrive today. What I might do is I might even break this Murakami up. So I might read it today until the post comes. And then if anything short comes in the post, I might read that. Because I'm trying to get below 50 currently reading. I've been aggressively DNFing to get there as well. So, yes, I think that's everything. I'm really tired. Um, but I'm going to do some filming now. All right, making my radio show, listening to the stand. How much longer do I have left on the stand now? I have just under six hours left. 
6.32 a.m. on what's the day and date? Thursday the 2nd of April 2020. All still in lockdown, of course. My sleeping pattern is still atrocious. So last night I went to bed at 7 p.m., woke up at 4 a.m. Uh, and so I've just been working and filming and recording my radio show and hopefully not keeping my neighbour up too much. Um, yeah, it's going to be a productive day, I should imagine. I've been really cracking on with my books as well. So I now have Meet. The first round of edits on that is complete. That's with Pam. Uh, Jailed, which is book three after the Tower Hill Terror, coming out on April the 10th. Here we go. Uh, message me if you want a copy as well, although I am selling out. Um, but yeah, so Jailed, which is book three in the series, that's now finished. Third round of edits, all sorted, all ready to go to the publishers. So obviously I'm going to wait for Tower Hill Terror to come out, but then we'll start gearing up for the release of book three. And so I've been working on a book called Scarlet Sins, which is collected stories and songs. So it's some short stories of mine, along with the lyrics to my music and the guitar chords as well. So I'm about a quarter of the way through that. And then when I finish that, that's going to Pam. Uh, I'm writing Monsters of Rock, which is my current writing work in progress as opposed to editing. That's on 45,000 words, so that's coming along. Uh, I've also got Kiss Kiss Death Death, which is a new poetry collection. Just need to proofread that and then that'll be ready to publish. I've got another thing called Oceanus, which is ready to publish. I don't know whether I actually am going to or not. I've even finished writing my memoirs, which is about 150,000 words now. That needs editing at some point. Lightfold book number four is planned out. And then there's something called the Lexicologist Handbook, which is basically a dictionary of weird and obscure words, which I worked on years ago, and I think I'm going to re-edit and maybe release properly. And uh, I've been reading A Wild Sheep Chase by Haruki Murakami. I picked this up yesterday, and I've al already almost finished it. So I should finish this today. And then I'm going to probably read Twilight by Peter James, unless a different book comes in the post. Because... I don't really want to read it, it's just I've got about six Peter James books to get through and I'm working on reducing my TBR. 8am and we've got four hours, 50 minutes remaining. Oh, I'm still going, i got the snooker on, it's half twelve. Okay, and how long have we got left? They had managed to keep amused with a whole town to plunder for diverting. I've got... An hour and 40 minutes Still left. I found a medium-sized Honda electrical generator in a supply house on... Ugh, it's killing me though, I'm tired. They were underway again. We're still going. I'm on the last file. Each file is an hour and 17 minutes long. So I have another hour and five minutes to go. The narrator's just been singing the first Noel and oh my god, I wanted to jump out the window or something. I am actually going really nuts today from being alone and isolated and stuff. So I might get drunk later and play some guitar. Then, uh... Life's just not great for anyone at the moment, is it, you know? And it's just because I'm home alone and stuff. And because I work online. Like, even other people, they'll have, like, Saturdays and Sundays off, even if they've, they've still got work. A lot of people don't have work. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful that I do still have work, because I can still keep paying my way and stuff. But I'm just going to be working all weekend and going straight into next week. And like, for the foreseeable future, until the quarantine is lifted, I'm just non-stop working and not seeing anyone. And it's just very demoralising, you know? But I am at least being productive, so there's that. i finished the stand, but next up is a 10-hour audiobook that I can't be bothered to start with yet. I'm making, uh, I've got these chicken-style pieces. Uh, vegan, of course. We've got some onion in there, uh, garlic. I'm gonna just got a generic curry sauce. Obviously, sourcing ingredients is difficult at the moment, so I'm just going with what I've got. And I bought a lot of jarred sauces, even though I normally like to make them fresh, but can't guarantee I'll get ingredients. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I probably won't start my next audiobook until tomorrow, but I may well start it then. We'll see. I need to go to the post office again. Look at my pile. So, hello, Biggie. That's good timing. So that rucksack is full of parcels, and then there's that stack next to it all needs to go as well. And I took a rucksack full of that rucksack on Monday. And obviously I don't want to go out, As if I can avoid going out, I need to avoid going out, but um, I mean I make money, it's helping me to get by, so I kind of need to, you know? 
but at least the place I'm going to now is like a small supermarket style thing as well so I can take the rucksack sell all my parcels and then like literally even if I just buy beer you know I might as well bring a rucksack full of stuff back with me so that's what's happening Biggie you've got your ass right oh shit because I've got the window open you're not allowed to escape you're not allowed to escape. You can sit in the window, but you can't escape. Bloody hell. Because that's where we're at. And like I say, I'm fucking exhausted. I'm ba about halfway through uh, Poirot Investigates. Which isn't a bad effort, because I think I woke up today, and I was about halfway through Murakami. So yeah. And then next, I might read Beloved by Toni Morrison. I did try and read that Peter James Twilight book. It's not very good, so... I do want to read everything that Peter James has ever written though, so it's going to become a bedtime book. <laughs>
Take me back to the start The pendulum doesn't swing for passion Even Nora can make those stubborn hands freeze Sometimes just a soft light in a bed Tired traveler to his knees. She said, If you come to me, I'll make it easy. If you come to me, I'll make it easy for you. When you come to me, you can breathe freely. Now let you stand a while on my side. Stand a while on my side. Stand a while on my side. Miss you terribly already, miss the space between your eyelids Where I stare through awkward sentences and avoid the awkward silence Miss your teeth when they chatter, when we smoked out in my garden When we couldn't sleep for all the heat, so I talk began the heart And miss your small hands in the palm of mine, the fact that good at making Miss you sitting up incessantly, and the fact you're always waking his way behind the counter I shot him in the face we're watching Charlie hello Charlie it won't let me zoom anymore sorry Charlie hello it is Saturday the 4th of April I am very very tired I was very tired yesterday as well um, I've had quite a lot of, I've had quite a lot of work come in so that's good so I've been keeping myself busy so yesterday in the morning I went to the post office and again I have another stack of books ready to go oh man I'm actually Pick, picking up books that need to be posted like I'm selling stuff faster than I can take it to the post office So we're building up a backlog, but it's good because it's helping me to downsize and You know make some more space in my house and shit and um, Yeah, 
and hopefully then it'll be easier for me to move out of this place at some point although we might be looking at next year now obviously what with all this coronavirus stuff um yesterday i played some guitar so i'll probably put some video clips in of that into into my vlog um yeah there's a group on facebook called open mic Solate. i'll link to it below actually if any of you guys are musicians or even if you just want to support some musicians it's like a virtual open mic basically and me and a bunch of my friends have been posting in there so i posted this new song called present past imperfect which is about dating apps got great lyrics girls with tits and fucking legs and shit and they're always riding horses she's looking for a man without a fish in his photo but he has to be six feet or taller and then what's the bit at the end um no bio but don't say hey it's boring me and my husband are exploring yeah good stuff um what have i been reading i finished reading that book which has gone missing what the fuck is it so I finished reading Poirot Investigate, so a full review of that will be coming soon. And then I picked up How Not To Be A Boy by Robert Webb, which is his sort of memoir and him coming to terms with modern masculinity and all that stuff. I'm getting on for halfway through, not quite, but, but getting there. Probably will be halfway through by the end of the day. And it's alright so far. Um, there's something about Robert Webb that I never used to like him for some reason, and then I did eventually kind of come around to like him. And that's the same thing that I'm having with his writing style that, to begin with, it kind of annoyed me a little bit. And I, I know it's just personal preference. Like, it, so far it is a very good memoir and I've got a lot to say about it, but um, it just wasn't really to my personal preference, I guess. But I'm getting into it a little bit more now and there will be a full review coming soon. Um, and yeah, I finished my audiobook of The Stand. My next one is Jingo by Terry Pratchett. So that should be fun. Uh, I've obviously read this before, this is for rereadathon, so I'm supposed to read it by the end of this month. I think it's only 11 hours. And like according to my weird rules that I have, I have set times for doing stuff, so in the evening is usually my audiobook time. But I spent some of my work hours, which is normally my YouTube time, listening to the stand to finish the standoff. So now I get to spend some of my evening hours, which would normally be like Netflix and audiobook, get to spend that watching YouTube, so that's very exciting. And um, yeah, I've also been spending a lot of time editing my books for a similar reason. I'm actually, so here, I am I have this schedule where I do 15 minutes of computer stuff, which is usually includes editing, but also marketing and shit. 15 minutes of tidying and then 15 minutes of writing. And I'm currently, I'm owed minus 605 hours of tidying. So I need to do loads of computer stuff. Like I need to do 605 minutes of computer stuff to then get my tidying thing to zero. However, I also owe 6,350 hours of writing, which is basically like 72 hours. Almost a week of solid writing I owe because I spent a lot of time not doing it, basically. But I am getting back to it now. But yeah, all of this computer time that I've been spending to try and get that tidying thing to zero, this probably makes no sense to anybody, but this is how my productivity works, so I'm sticking with it. Um, but all that computer time means I've been spending a lot of time editing. So I'm currently editing a short story and poetry and po sorry, short story and lyric collection called Scarlet Sins, uh, which has been on the works for like ten years or something insane. Um, but writing-wise, I'm also writing Monsters of Rock, which is on forty-five thousand words. Oh God, I'm so tired. This probably made no sense. I'm sorry, but I'm off to be more productive now, I guess. But you'll be more than just wet. Gotta get more bombs. That is ominous. I am watching Jack Jacksepticeye play Resident Evil 3, the remake, which is very cool because I played the original back in the day. I've got my coffee. I had a nap earlier. I'm so tired. I didn't sleep very well last night and then I got up at like 10. Oh, good coffee. Sorry, I'm just having a little look at my uh, YouTube comments here. Uh, we've got Charlie Heathcote has left loads. Blimey. Okay, well all is going good. Uh, what am I going to post tomorrow? I don't even know. Later on I'm doing a live stream in about an hour. So I've got my gear. And look at that pile of parcels. It is ridiculous. And there's more to collect from today as well. But yeah, that's largely where I'm at. Um, I've just been being productive. I've done a lot of overtime this weekend. So I've actually worked the equivalent of three days. <laughs> well, I think, no, Thursday, fr over Thursday, Friday, Saturday and today, I've worked five days, I think, or six days, something like that. 
Anyway, I'm still reading How Not To Be A Boy. I've very nearly finished it now. Uh, I have about 60, 70 pages to go, so I may or may not finish it this evening. And I've also only got about 100 pages left to go of um, Invisible Man. And then probably tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to start my audiobook for this month as well. So that's where we're at. Keep me in your jar of hearts. I'll never let you down. I am a parachute. There's meaning in the air we breathe. It seems we need something to get attached to. tell you mine it's been this way since the dawn of time i'm terrified
nobody cares if you're feeling blue like I do. My belly is craving, God is shaking in my head. Feels like I'm dying and I wish I was dead. If I live past tomorrow, that'll be a long time. For I'll read
Do a gauntlet challenge. It is Monday. Biggie's here with me, aren't you, Biggie? Which is good because Daddy's a bit sad today. Uh, well, I probably drank too much yesterday. That probably didn't help. Uh, I got a message from my ex-girlfriend as well, being like, um, "Do you fancy a beer?" And it's like, it's a pandemic. We, you know. Yeah. So yesterday I did my Sunday sessions live stream for a couple of hours. That seemed to go all right. Um, yeah, now I drank some Frosty Jacks, which is like quite strong uh, hard cider. It's what I used to drink when I was like 17. British people know what Frosty Jacks is. Well, the British reprobates will. If you don't know what Frosty Jacks is, it's probably a good thing. But yeah, so I was drinking that and then I went to bed. Woke up today a little bit too late to go to the post office, but I have now received this. I don't even know if I can... No, I can't pick it up in one hand. Can I... Oh, God! Massive industrial roll of parcel wrapping paper. So I'm starting to uh, wrap all these parcels now. Uh, I've finished reading How Not To Be A Boy by Robert Webb. It was quite good. I'd probably give it like a four out of five in the end. Uh, full review coming soon. Uh, and now I'm reading Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Uh, this was actually picked out for me by a friend of mine. Uh, I, I get, I, why is my phone going nuts? Who is this? Oh, it's somebody on Tinder. <laughs> um, it's, it's quite cool, actually. There's just some random person on Tinder who their profile is like, oh, yeah, just here to talk rubbish, help you take your mind off things. So I'm like, sweet, I'll talk rubbish with you. So we're talking about Netflix at the moment. So, uh, yeah, this is... this is Actually, it was quite, I had an interesting conversation with her because I was like, I think it's a really nice idea, but I bet you get some dickheads, you know? And she was like, yeah, actually, I just had a message just before you messaged me from some dude who was like, oh, you shouldn't be on here if you're not gonna get your tits out or whatever. It's just like, nah. Oh, that's why I like these apps, especially now when you can't go out. It's like, way to chat to people, in it? Because most of my friends are bored of the same bullshit from me. And uh, I talked to you guys about books, so that's, there's that as well. That is my social life at the moment. It's like dating apps, books. Yeah, my social life is like dating apps, booktube, cat. Anyway. Yeah, um, what's weird about this, a lot of people have said this is their favourite novel and so I've been really looking forward to getting to it. And um, yeah, my friend picked it out because I do this thing where I get I buy a bunch of books at the start of each month. So I was getting her to pick random numbers that would like correspond to books on my list. 
So this is what she ended up picking out, and I've started reading it, and basically a flu has just hit New York City and everybody's dead. I mean, I've been tabbing it out, it's been eerily close to home, including one of the main characters goes to a supermarket and is panic buying, including a trolley full of toilet paper. And I'm like, this is, this is weird, man. So, I look forward to finishing this off and seeing if there's a solution to the pandemic in here somewhere. So that's about where we're at. I'm gonna try and cheer the fuck up. Um, watch some more YouTube, do some editing. This is my knee here. I don't know why I'm sitting like this. It's how I sit now, apparently. And cats just sitting there. So yeah, need to go to the post office tomorrow, really, to post some books. My new novel comes out on Friday, The Tower Hill Terror, so that's very exciting. Um, new radio show, episode two goes out tomorrow with Twanglin' Jack Ford. Uh, I have posted my radio show on YouTube as well. So yeah, I mean it's all just keeping busy, I'm just trying not to cry. This is part of the problem is that with this pandemic, basically I have a set of ones like primarily anti-anxiety but also antidepressant and the others the other way around, primarily antidepressant but also anti-anxiety. And um, I've ran out of my anti-anxiety one and it's not exactly easy just to go to the, well I, I need to sign up at the doctors for online patient shit, which are going to take like two weeks. I might just use, there's a service called Push Docs you can use on your phone where you just get a virtual consultation, so I might do that. Anyway, that is the end of this week's reading vlog, so as always, thanks a lot for watching. Sorry, I'm boring even myself here. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments whether you just yawned whether I did, when I did. And also whether you've read any of these books. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.